All right, how's it going, everybody? Today, I want to talk about the um, the monsters list that's right over here that I've been playing to great success on the ladder lately. Um, I've cracked the top 10 a couple of times with it. Right now, as I will show you guys, we are currently sitting in the top 10 of North America, and I want to say like top 40 worldwide, somewhere around with this, and I've been playing this deck uh, pretty much exclusively. Yeah, we're in 33rd place globally right now at over 3,500 MMR. And we're at 6th place in the North America region where I am. So I just want to do a deck tech video and explain to you some of what's going on with this list. Uh, why I think it's so powerful and what it does. So this is my version of the Frost Fog Hybrid. I do want to give credit where credit's due. The original shell of this list started from Join Times list. Um, another player who had posted this deck. And I started there and kept making changes over the course of the last 4 or 5 days while I've been playing this. Bouncing around the top 100 or so. Um, so, let's go ahead and start with what the deck does. The deck has the Frost and Fog plan. The Foglets are very, very good. They're super powerful. They're almost like mini Imperial Golems. They come out with your Dagon hero power, which is one of the main reasons why you want Dagon. Another reason is you don't have to overload your deck with a ton of Fog effects, which are mostly um, underwhelming. We only have the additional one plus the Woodland Spirit. Woodland Spirit is powerful enough, you'd probably just play it anyway. And just being able to play the one Fog effect to reliably trigger your Foglets is really, really powerful. You can get them when you need them. Uh, the Frost Package is in here. This is mostly a consideration in the Monster's Mirror. You're popping Harpy Eggs with them. And these cards is how you beat Nilfgaard. You just destroy them. If they can't remove the Frost, you're going to beat them with it. Um, I've had Round 1s where I've done upwards of 60 to 70 damage just from having a dual frost effect going at the same time. Um, and yeah, that's just, even Nilfgaard's, Nilfgaard's insane bronze units are just going to be unable to compete with that. Um, if they can't remove it, they're eventually going to lose to it. So we're going to round this out. This is one of the first changes I made from the original list. And we have Arch Griffins in here. Now, commonly you would see Drowners or something like that in this slot. The Arch Griffins are in large part response to the fact that I was playing against a lot more monsters decks than Skellige. Now, the last day or so, that's reverted, and if in your particular meta, wherever you are on the ladder, you're playing against more Skellige than you are against monsters, you can just swap these right out for Drowners, as Drowners are really, really good at breaking up the combo with the Longships, the Hunters, and Morkvarg, and them all buffing each other and going absolutely berserk, and accruing, I don't know, hundreds of points of value in a round. Those cards can be absurd. Um, the Griffin is in response to other Foglet decks, Clearing Frost, etc, etc. And also, once in a while, if you're only in like one and a half rows, you know, you have like a minor commitment to one row and a heavy commitment to another row, this can also let you play around a Ragnarok. Awesome. Um, so, what's the rest of our Bronze Suite? We obviously have the Frosts that go with our Frost Dogs here. The Frost Dogs are great. The Frosts are necessary. Uh, not a ton to be said there. Moving along from that point, we have Clear Skies. The Clear Skies is just simply a one of. It's not um, super necessary to the deck the way it functions. I just prefer to have one additional way to clear off all of the fog units. Uh, you know, clear off fogs, clears off frost, whatever your problem may be. Doubles as a rally in a lot of spots. You get in a lot of places where you thin out your deck rather large so you know exactly what you're going to hit off of a rally if you're going to need to use it for that purpose there. And if not exactly, you're usually on 50-50s, that type of deal. Because we have a ton of thinning effects in this deck with the Foglets going on, the Frost, the Crones, etc. So our Silver Package. We have the Crones. This is your big finisher. You don't always hold them to round three. Uh, in the Monster's Mirror, you often do want to hold them to round three. Uh, because if your opponent has Crones and you don't, you're at a pretty significant disadvantage. Besides that, you sort of play them when you want to cement power in a round, or if you need to catch up tempo-wise to let your weather do the work. A lot of times, Nilfgaard will get really, really far ahead of you early, but your weather is going to outvalue them the longer the round goes. But you don't want to give them a great pass because you're 25 points behind. Something like Crones plays a lot of catch-up and lets your weather really do its work while playing the tempo game for you. Um, Catacan. Catacan is in complete response to the amount of Skellige decks running around. Uh, you use this to eat a gigantic hunter. Sure, I mean, that's what you do. The hunters get really big. If you don't have caretakers, steal it. You eat it. Um, the one bronze we did not talk about was the Bloodcurdling Roar. This obviously is very good against Rot Tossers. Um, when you're playing against Skellige, the unit they injure, you can eat it with the bear, and then it's no longer injured, so it makes their shield maidens harder to proc. It also serves a function as when you're playing against Nilfgaard, sometimes they don't have a lot of big units for you to eat with your Catacan. And this is another 12 that you can eat later on. Granted, it's weak to Peter, 
Um, but sometimes you can play around that, make that less of an issue. Sometimes they play the Peter early. But the Curdling Roar does just enough, synergizes with the Catacan to make its inclusion worthwhile. The Catacan's very good. I probably wouldn't play the deck without it. Uh, the other silver that we have over here is going to be the Frightener. And Frightener used to be a fiend in the original version of the deck. I felt like I wanted an answer to opposing Cantarellas. The Frightener also helps in the sort of miserable um, spe Scoia spell matchup. Uh, that's not a good matchup for us, but having access to a Spy plus the Siri really lets us flip around the card advantage and gives us a significant edge there. This is also another way to break up the Skellige chains that go on, as you can send two units into Oblivion and, you know, send them off to wherever, hopefully not next to each other in the perfect order, in a different row, to keep the chain going. At the very least, it's pretty good there. Um, oftentimes you can get pretty far ahead, but your opponent's being stubborn, doesn't want to get out. Another good spot for Frightener. Frightener also works with Bork. On the Bork turn, Frightener's obviously great. Uh, this will be usually the last card you play before the Bork goes off. Uh, I've been very, very impressed with this card. Uh, I'll reconsider Fiend once the, um, the buff happens to it, and it goes back up to 7 Strength. As a lot of times, you can't lock the Mork Bard against Skellige, so you're really just locking down a long shift, and at that point, trading a silver for a bronze only at plus two strength, because it's only dealing two damage to it. It's not a great exchange, but once you factor in the extra two strength, trading a silver for a bronze at plus four strength, not so bad. That's a much more reasonable deal. Then we have the Water Hag here. Um, the Water Hag, A, all the mages are great. Um, you need a reason really not to be playing them, rather than looking for a reason to put them in your deck. The Clear Skies, you know, saves you from a lot of different situations. I'm sure you guys know what that does by now. The Rain can be super helpful for when your opponent has one big unit, say an Imperial Brigade, and then a lot of smaller units, maybe the Imperial Golems, things like that. The Rain can be very effective against. Um, it's also nice at popping eggs in the Water Monsters Mirror, but mostly that Lacerate attached to a body is so powerful. I've had the Lacerate itself, without the body, be worth well over 20 points. Uh, this usually happens against Skellige and Nilfgaard as they tend to stack one row pretty heavily and they can pass being up like 20 points or so. You've already played Crones, they don't think you have any possible way to get ahead, but yes you do. Um, this is just a really, really powerful swing card and I think it's super well positioned in the meta right now. That being said, it's versatile enough that you're never really cutting it anyway. Uh, then we're going to move on to the gold package. So Woodland Spirit pulls our Foglets, super powerful, puts a lot of strength on board, just all around solid card. Don't know why we decided to buff this card. Uh, I don't think it's necessary. I think the card's already very, very powerful. Uh, yeah, so this is pretty close to an auto-include, and I wouldn't play the deck without it. Then we move along to Caretaker. Caretaker's another response to Skellige running around when they make a 20-strength Reaver Hunter. Particularly if you lost round one, that means you're going to be going first in round three, and you get the first crack at their graveyard. Uh, you can actually, I've spent entire round twos just frosting their Reaver Hunters and then beating them with a giant swipe or lacerate. And uh, at that point, I'm really just buffing my own Reaver Hunter because that thing's mine. It's might, it might be sitting on their side of the board, but it's just a loner for them because that thing's mine. I'm going to steal it and that's going to make this gold, it's been worth upwards of 30 points for me. Um, super powerful. That being said, it's kind of mediocre against Nilfgaard. Um, you usually find a decent spot for it in most matchups, but you wouldn't be playing it if Skellige wasn't so prevalent. So that's something to keep in mind. If you're not seeing a lot of Skellige at your position on the ladder, you could consider changing the Caretaker, maybe an Igni, maybe something else. Uh, Siri. Siri is just amazing. I put Siri in pretty much all my decks until I have a reason not to. She's great. She's your main card advantage engine. She gets you round wins where you no other card would. You can just force your opponent to stop playing cards because they don't want to drop down two or even three cards. Siri is an amazingly powerful card. She's great in this deck. Uh, play her. She's awesome. Bork. Bork is one of the more interesting choices. And this was the last addition to the deck. And this big old dragon over here actually serves a sort of similar purpose to Siri in that a lot of times you're going to scare your opponents out of the round. One way I've been using them to great effect is against Nilfgaard in round one. They're trying to set up all three of their Imperial Brigades. What you really want to do is not let them get value off of all three. So after the first two come down, at that point you drop a board and they have to stop in their tracks because their board's going to get annihilated, right? Even if they manage to stagger them, which they often do with like the bronze weather removal unit that they have. Uh, it's a very common play for them to stagger them. You're still going to blow them both up. So you sort of force them to end the round prematurely and not get full value out of their cards. Their emissaries aren't so powerful when there's not brigades. Their brigades are much better in longer rounds. And being able to sort of force them out of a round or just get scorched for like 30 or so um, is a really powerful ability. Against Skellige, it's okay. It weakens the Morkvarg a lot generally, uh, sometimes taking one or two units down with it. Um, but weakening the Morkvarg 
for future rounds is certainly nice as our carryovers are limited to just harpies so not too strong there the bork has been invaluable you could certainly cut it if it's not your style of card i found great success with it and i've been really enjoying playing it i wouldn't change it for any other card right now so let's take a look at some of the matchups here this is all between 33 and 3600 mmr um i feel like i'm a very big favorite in the monsters mirror and that's mostly in part due to the arch griffins the arch griffins are great there um, just, they're basically free weather clears, uh, which can be super powerful swings. So, yeah, I, I just feel like you're a big favorite there. Against Nilfgaard, um, we've turned this around. This used to be a negative matchup for us, but as the days have gone on, maybe I've gotten a little better at playing it. Certainly, once I added the Bork, uh, that helped the matchup greatly. And I feel like maybe we're a slight favorite there. This is the matchup where the coin toss is the most important in the Nilfgaard matchup. When you lose the coin toss, you're really behind the eight ball against them. When you win the coin toss... Now you're ready to fight. You're, you're in a fair position. Northern Realms. Northern Realms can be tricky. They're all doing some nonsense with Reaver Hunters. Um, you don't have a great way to deal with the Reaver Hunters besides Bork. If you get the Bork off, awesome. It's going to win the game. If they hold the Shackles, they have all the Reaver Hunters, they have the full combo, they're just going to get you. You don't really have any other way to respond to it. The one other thing you can do is if they're planning on like Nenekeing three of them back and then using a, a Shani to resurrect the fourth one, you can step in after the Neneki, use the Caretaker to steal their fourth one so they don't have a res target, and if they don't have a way to tutor through their deck, they're unable to get the combo off altogether. Those are your main accesses to interact, but the matchup is pretty tough, and I feel like I am a significant underdog there, even though we're currently 4-4, four four, matchup didn't feel great. Skoyatel, you're heavily favored against Dwarves, your weather's really good against them, your Bork's really good against them, your whole strategy in general is just very, very good against them. Um, you're super bad against the uh, Spellatel deck. Spellatel's a problem for us. We don't have a ton of giant golds. Now, the Frightener in the series certainly helped us out. You can win. The Bork, you can win. Your big plan in that matchup is to draw out their Shackles on your Siri, and then you want to draw out their Hero Power, like, at all costs, so they can't flash back the Shackles. Most decks are only running the one, so if they don't have access to their Hero Power to get a second Shackles off on you, that's and you can Bork them, that's your to victory. Card advantage is king in this matchup. Uh, get it at all costs. That's why Frightener and Siri are so important. Uh, Skellige. Skellige, the matchup, um, it looks very favorable, although it was more favorable. The The gap is closing, and the gap is closing because of the Savage Bear. The bear is actually really good against us. We're kind of swarming. We play a lot of small units to the board, and the bear just accrues an insane amount of value. It prevents our harpies from carrying over. It's just a real annoyance. It makes our woodland spirit sort of laughable. Our foglets are no longer that good. Uh, so the versions with bear, you're a significant underdog against. Versions without the bear, I feel like I'm a very big favorite. Um, you can't really do much about Morkvard. We don't have lock pieces, and even if we did, they have decoy, they have donar. They're ready for that. You can't just try and fight them with one lock. How you really wind up fighting them is carefully managing your strength, your resources, getting a high-value Lacerate off, scaring them out of a round with Bork, maintaining card advantage, and saving enough firepower to finish them. Uh, but overall, if played properly, I feel like the matchup and the stats are backing me up here is very good, and that's one of the main reasons I was able to climb with this. So let's talk about one of... We talked about a lot of the strengths of the deck. One of the big holes in the deck, the mulligan phase is atrocious. This is just a problem. Um, it looks bad. It is bad. It's a problem. You're just going to have to accept that if you play a deck. Some of your hands are going to look like utter trash. Absolute, complete garbage. You have three crones that you want exactly one of in your hand at any given time. You have three foglets that you want zero of. And you have the double frost, which you also want zero of because you want to pull them with the dogs. But you can only pull them with the dogs, so if you don't draw the dogs, they're going to sit in your deck and make your draws worse. Um, also, you have to be careful of Frightener when you play it because you're going to have a lot of dead draws in your deck. The deck's power level overall is very high. It's playing a lot of very good cards. Very, very efficient cards. The thing is um, that's sort of curbing that is how bad the mulligans are. If you're going to play this deck, just be warned. It's something you're going to have to deal with. You're going to get some shitty draws. It's going to happen. Over time, the deck, the, the power of the deck will show out. But you can go through streaks on, uh, you know, where the deck's just not looking great. I don't think it's necessarily a high roll deck, but it's a don't low roll deck. If you're low rolling, it's not going to feel good, man. And you can have some of the ugliest possible imaginable hands that you can construct in Gwent with this deck. Um, you know, I've had hands that have had triple foglet, double frost, double crone. And it's just like, all right, uh, what do I do here? There's not enough mulligans on the planet to get through it. You, so you have to be willing to take on that um, a bit of risk when playing the deck. That being said, I think the overall power level is worth it. I really like the deck. I've been successfully climbing with it, uh, maintaining position, climbing a little bit. 
further and further each day towards that number one spot that we're trying to hit. I've peaked out at rank three with the deck. I've hit it a couple of times. I've hit rank five a couple of times. You know, then you take some losses, you drop back down. And you guys can see, um, I pretty much stabilized within the top 50, uh, running almost exclusively this deck. And I've logged a ton of games with it. I really like the way the deck plays out. This is, you know, 130 something games here. This is, or 127. This is quite a bit of games. I think it's a lot of data. I really like the deck. If you have any questions about the deck, feel free to stop by my stream. Um, I will be streaming at 11.30 a.m. Eastern, Monday through Friday, until, I mean, tonight I went to like 8 o'clock. We had a great day. Um, you know, until pretty much whatever time I feel like. Honestly, we're still working out the ending time. Uh, but yeah, stop by. Ask me some questions. I interact with the chat a lot. Um, I try and answer as many questions as possible. Uh, if you put something in the comments section on the video, I will try and answer it. But once again, the best way to get in touch with me is by stopping by my stream when I'm streaming. I'm there five days a week. Come ask me questions. I'm here to help you guys out. So I hope you like the deck. Good luck with it. Um, and yeah, just good luck with the deck. Just know it's a very powerful deck with a high risk factor. Uh, watch out for your mulligans. May the force be with you. And uh, yeah, go kick some ass with it. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit subscribe. I'm going to be doing one to two of these type of videos every week based on what I'm playing. Uh, I want to thank you guys for stopping by again. And uh, yeah, enjoy the deck. Have a good one.